All right, um, I guess day two of the um, of my bike talk podcast, and um, heading over to the West Side Greenway now. Beautiful night, 88 degrees. Feels like 88 degrees. Thunderstorms potentially, but I don't know. I guess we'll see. It says no trespassing, no dumping. I thought it was no trumping. <laughs> oh man. So here we're at the uh, West Side Highway. Again, not a highway. 35 mile an hour street, except everybody does 60 on it and races to get to the lights. Um, this is called intersection bullying. This is a term called intersection bullying. And basically it's when a car like this is sort of trying to make its way into the intersection there. So he sort of inches, inches, but he actually has a red light. He's not actually allowed to go. But just by moving, even if he's not actually going through, all the way through a red light, it's still um, an extremely hostile thing to do to pedestrians and cyclists it's it's um you know you're just inching your car through an intersection um and uh i think we know all too well cars even at extremely low speeds can do massive damage to people so even if the car is going a mile an hour right runs over your foot or knocks you down or whatever you hear about cyclists who are stopped at red lights and like somebody hits them from behind and they're not hitting them from like 30 miles an hour they're hitting them because they're you know usually like stopped and they're impatient and they're sort of jutting in uh not paying attention whatever but even really minor kind of what you might call a fender bender but fender bender to a human body is like a breaking leg you know breaks your leg situation um, state laws to yield to pedestrians are like that. But if you're a car, then uh, you can do whatever the fuck you want. This is a uh, pretty beautiful sunset going to see here. Obviously it's kind of tarnished a little bit by the uh, towing, you know, the towing lot in YPD where they tow your car. This is where they bring it into, you know, the nicest real estate in Manhattan. It's on the water and of course it's a parking lot for towed vehicles. So it's of course the worst possible type of vehicle also. Right, because it's like people who didn't pay their parking tickets or this and that. So all the people who are going to pick up their vehicle are the people who are regularly violating uh, lots of rules of the road. And they're all collected there with you know, what could be described as the best view of uh, from Manhattan. GoPro is mounted uh, like it's cockeyed on my helmet. It's just slightly off, and that's what makes the view um, a little bit angled. I realize I'm like, well, I'm not tilting my head to the right. Why is this all kind of messed up? And I realize I looked at the helmet, and it's just, it's not the most obvious thing. I think when I mounted it, it looked really, you know, pretty, pretty straight. 
um, a wave to this gentleman bus driver who gave me the, the go ahead. And uh, yeah, so uh, look at this guy going backwards and dancing. Love it. Um, and yeah, so the footage from this GoPro, my helmet, uh, I think I gotta, might have to rip the whole thing off and remount it. It's uneven. Um, hey, I ain't, I ain't filming a movie with this thing. Uh, not that big a deal. Not even sure if anybody's watching any of this. But. Everybody can make do with slightly off-center uh, footage. Um, so here we're already at 47th Street. You can see how quick biking is such a fast form of transportation. Um, I think we've been only going like five, six minutes, right? You can go about a mile in five minutes. But I noticed when I was in the Netherlands and we were biking everywhere and I didn't know where we were going most of the time. So. I put everything into Google Maps, biking directions, put put it on the helmet, uh, the um, the handlebar mount, and just did normal like turn by turn directions. And what I noticed is that Google Maps uh, basically says that you can ride about a five minute mile. I think it's something like that, maybe a little bit faster, like a four minute mile. So, I think it's something like that. Um, which, you know, would be incredibly fast if you were running, but it's a pretty casual pace. All right, so five minute mile is about 12 miles an hour. 12 miles an hour, I'd say right now, I think I'm probably doing like 14 miles an hour. You know, maybe 13. I'm not like pushing hard, but I'm not, you know, we're coasting. A little bit of wind resistance you can hear it probably um, but it's a pretty casual pace I think so 12 miles an hour isn't that bad 10 miles an hour uh, pretty slow you know probably on a bike and then you know if you're on a cargo bike and you're you know driving your kids around or whatever that might be uh, you know you might go like eight miles an hour something like that with 200, 250 pounds, something like that, uh, riding around. You just can't go that fast. Um, so this is like, I love these like tree line um, pathways. It really cools down the path. I think with global warming, um, I mean, just warm weather, but obviously fueled by global warming, but just hot summers. I was riding last week, and when we went riding home from the uh, critical mass ride, going up 6th Avenue, and as soon as you hit Central Park, you get into Central Park, you notice right away like a 10 degree difference. Um, just by being in Central Park, right, being surrounded by the canopy of of trees and it's just much cooler inside than the all the you know heat that comes off of these um, cars and the pavement and all that um, guys going uh, a little aggressively there nice bottle sitting in the middle so So yeah, trees are, I think, you know, we need more, I, th I feel like when you have these roads around New York City, you really look at them, you realize that like trees are very rare. They're not, I mean, there's a ton of them and you count them and I was part of the tree hackathon with the parks department and I have a, one of my favorite shirts is one, two, tree. But we need a lot more. Um, to make kind of the area comfortable for walking and biking, um, 
you need a lot more trees. <laughs> you need some, um, you need the, uh, these uh, rows lined with kind of more thick um, trees. And instead we have these four, five, six, seven lane highways that heat up and have no, nothing to cool them off. So if you're riding in the middle of these streets, you're basically riding on like an asphalt highway. You know, if you're going like 2nd Avenue or 1st Avenue or some of those places on the east side, but you know, almost every avenue is like that. And it's just something that you don't see in other places. Like, you know, it's very, again, going back to the, the, uh, the uh, theme is that New York City is still quite hostile to cyclists. And you know, we call it a walkable city, and of course it is, but so much of it is just openly hostile to people who walk and people who ride bikes. I mean, I guess you can make the argument for drivers too. They could probably feel like they're threatened in some cases, but go ahead. but to everybody. Um, pull over here and attach this thing again. Guys, right. Kids to slow the fuck down. That's true. I think that guy that passed up there was uh, going a little fast. Again, back to the main themes. <laughs> uh, we, somehow, it's like all personal responsibility in New York City, right? In, in America, right? It's all, you're on your own. Uh, unless there's like litigation. All right, it's like legally, um, compliant, but um, but like the law is what drives things, right? So you can sue somebody, yeah, spend some years real. in court, and then down. maybe get something changed. But like, but like, anyway. But it goes back to you know signage and basic kind of direction and using um, using the design of the street itself to tell you what you should and should not do. And again, back here, we just sort of throw a ton of pavement off there and say, figure it out. And like, maybe that worked when there wasn't, when there wasn't much going on. But with lots of people, you kind of need a little bit, you don't need rules, but you need designs for the most dangerous uh, amongst us, right? People in cars need physical cues to tell them to slow down. I'm like so annoyed when I see signs that are like 35 miles an hour, yield to pedestrians, things like that. They're worthless. You might as well, they're completely worthless. They just, I mean, nobody's paying attention to it. Um, but you're not even paying attention to other things, like nobody's enforcing this stuff. So even if you didn't pay attention to the sign, you can't even pay attention to like people getting ticketed or people getting towed, right? Because even the enforcement is not happening. And then if you want some like leadership from the cops, you look at how cops um, do whatever they're doing and they're driving fast, they're going to doing crazy stuff. They're eating their lunch in the bike lane. They're parking on the sidewalks. So they're obviously not setting any example. So from every angle, as a driver, you're like really conditioned to do whatever you want. 
and know that there's really almost no repercussions for your action. And then when there is, the sky is falling, everything is, uh, you know, you know, then you have apps that let you fight your $25 parking ticket or whatever, or your $150 parking ticket because, you know, you've been parking illegally for like 18 weeks and finally somebody from the police department finally wrote a summons. And now you're up in arms and upset, so you're gonna fight it using some app. That's great. So yeah, here are some boats, yachting. I'm not all, you know, complaining. Uh, I do complain a lot, but, but I think it's because we, you know, we live here and we want this place to be um, safe. And when you are like walking by the same things or riding by the same things over and over again, um, you notice this stuff and it wears you down. I think I need to uh, start talking to more people. I think I gotta stop talking to myself a little bit. I maybe try to do some interviews along the way here. But I never feel like I can. It's not really a, you know, that is one thing that's sort of missing is, is not, you do have some sense of camaraderie, but on your commute, you're, you're basically on your own the same way that you are on a, on a subway, you know, or in a car. You're just free, running solo. You gotta get to where you're going. You don't wanna be bothered. Uh, you're probably not gonna smile a lot at other people. I know Eric Adams in Brooklyn at the memorial ride for um, the cyclist Jose who got, who was killed. He said, you know, be nice to each other, say hello. Um, and that's like, not that helpful because that's something you just say and then it's not something that actually, it's not a policy. It's not a change in the design of those streets. It's just a, um, what's it called? Hopes and dreams and, um, and uh, prayers and, you know, thoughts and prayers policy. So saying like, be nice to each other, write something nice in Twitter and send that to the world instead of being filled with hate. Like, okay, that's true. You're I mean, we should all strive for that. But also, redesign the goddamn street. And also, build a network of protected bike lanes. And also, uh, hold these drivers accountable for murder when they kill people. Also, find all these goddamn hit and run drivers who, like 95% of them, get off and never are seen again and inflict massive damage to quite a number of people, not just, certainly not just cyclists, but, uh, but tons of pedestrians. I mean, tons of pedestrians. I think we have 70 pedestrian deaths this year, so far, alone. 70. 70 people died in one day from any other form. A flight, one flight, you, rebuild, you, you, would, you would land all, you would ground all the flights. Boeing would take a hit, right? This all happened, we all know this. Right, you have, you would re, um, redesign all of the uh, mechanics and figure out and determine what is the cause of, you know, this particular flight failing and crashing and killing all these people. If there were 70 people who died. If you did that for this boat, this awful, awful um, boat scuba diving uh, uh, crash or uh, fire. They say 33 people is the latest count who were killed on this awful, uh, you know, boat disaster. You know, um, one guy got killed by an elevator. Now they're picketing. You know, uh, they're. Um, 
all the residents are are uh, like boycotting and not paying their rent and they should because you know fuck that building and like whoever signed off on these elevators but that's we have 70 people and 20 cyclists 21 cyclists and every single time it's like let's just look at this particular thing the incident and it's somebody's blame it's personal blame it's personal accountability so it's like oh this particular driver was speeding it's like okay but what about the entire neighborhood what about the street design what about the fact that it's a you know it's designated as a as a zone um I forgot what it's called a like high risk zone from the dot back in 2015 they haven't done a goddamn thing about that street i just read the article in streets blog today about like they added some cement in one particular intersection it's a five mile stretch of road you know with dozens and dozens and dozens of intersections on one main street okay i gotta take a break <laughs> this is the second hill coming up One, two, three, four, fifth, six. This is actually four lanes, but but two full lanes of parking because of course all these rich people who live here desperately need to park on the street for free. So that's one of the crazy things. If you just I just looked up like how much does it cost to own a car? Forget in the city, just in a uh, just a car. This is true like nationwide you add up like a lease it's like four hundred five six hundred dollars maybe a thousand dollars for like a tesla a thousand dollars a month right then on top of that you've got insurance i don't even know how much that is you've got gas whatever you've got maintenance if it's not that new or shit's breaking on it we had a car and once the maintenance hit you know a thousand dollars a year we were bringing it in we had to fix some stuff on it. We're like, this is insane. Um, all that stuff adds up. Maybe it's six, seven hundred dollars a month. Um, if you're in the city, maybe you're paying for parking, but a lot of these people are not. And so you look at the models and types of cars, and they're all just street parked. So they're all enjoying this free subsidy of free parking which market rate pricing in most of these places is like, let's say minimum $200 a month, minimum. I mean, if you can find $200 a month. See, is this guy gonna kill me? No. Cool. Are these people gonna stay in the way or good? Okay. So let's take a conservative amount, $200 a month. But really, if you look at the places around, even around here, $400 a month, easy, right? So of course you're like, well, $400 a month for nothing. No money to park on the street. And I'm willing to spend a half hour, you know, circling the block for 45 minutes or an hour or whatever, every single day or whenever I feel like using it. 
I'll go through the agony of alternate side parking, which like we're supposed to feel bad for drivers. We did alternate side parking for years. And it's like, that's what you do when you're too cheap to buy parking. You don't get, you don't get any tears for that. You don't get sympathy. This guy's got his blinkers on. He's got no lights, thank you. Let's slow this guy down. Oh, he's on his phone. Oh, JHV 1217 is totally on his phone. And then you got Jersey driver. Another driver sitting in the bike lane. Let's see what this guy on the phone is doing on his phone. Yeah, he's got his phone. I'm sure he's a nice guy when he's out of his car. No, no, uh, no judgment, you know. But. When you are in a car that can kill people, you should not be on your phone because not only is it illegal, but it's illegal because, you know, you kill people when you're on your phone. Also, not really sure how people... <laughs> Think of me talking to myself. I probably seem like I'm out of my mind, but I guess it's all the more reason to talk because then they notice you. <laughs> and it's good when people notice you when you're on a bike because at least they're noticing you. Park West. I had the pleasure of seeing the Central Park West uh, protected bike lane. I think it's, it's just between like 70th and 65th Street right now. But uh, boy, it's going to be really nice when they bring that, that up. It's a it's a really nice treatment. Um, hopefully they'll fix some of these potholes and shit. But yeah, once it's all the way up here, man, it's going to sort of change the vibe of the whole place. Oh, there's a cop right here. I'm gonna stop because I don't know if this guy's gonna ticket me. I don't really want to deal with that. Wow, it's like the first time I saw a cop and just stopped. But, cool. Now I'll probably die because I waited. Thank you. Oh, he's probably on his phone and eating a, a ham sandwich or something. Not paying attention to me. Probably not paying attention to anybody else. What you should be doing is running plates and seeing if anybody has open violations and pulling them over so they don't kill anybody or speeding or something. Oh, Jesus Christ. The fucking worst part of this is these. Oh boy. And I'm gonna go through. It's dangerous, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I get it. Now I'm gonna slow the F down here because holy shit, this is nothing but. You can probably hear it in my voice. A lot of jiggly. All right, I'll stop right here. Oh man, that's the one thing. One of one of the things that is annoying about city bikes is. These little hooks are really just not enough for these streets. They're fine if you have like really silky smooth, you know, streets. But like, look around, look at this, this pavement here. Everything's undone. I get it, they're redoing the street, but like, this texture is like not uncommon across the city. And that guy just went through a red light. Oh, no, that woman went through a red light. You just went through a red light. What is your thing? JLR 2010. That woman definitely just went through red light. 
be great if somebody could ticket her. Wonder how many violations she has. So bad, I can't keep this thing connected. So I really hope this thing doesn't fly out in a sec. Top. I think they're just getting some food. It's like literally the only time you see cops just stop around here. It's like in front of the Duck and Donuts and like in front of the Chinese food place and in front of like various food joints. You can get a good, good like food tour by just following, uh, yeah, over by the chicken place that's at 106 and um, Columbus. You can get a good food tour if you just follow uh, a couple of uh, cop cars around um, for lunch and for, uh, for breakfast. You can come in and be like, what's the police special? What does everybody else get? But, I mean, I definitely, again, can't blame them. I wish when they like rip up the pavement like this, they put down just a, a nice smooth. Oh, this guy almost turned into me. You are not in pain. Here's a bunch of cars parked out here with their doors open. GWT 5783. Thank you. Not that you know that you, or care that you're in a bike lane. Why would you even know that? There's no paint. And when there is paint, nobody cares. I think from the camera, it looks like I'm like in the middle of the block here, probably. It's really wide angle and stuff, but I'm actually pretty far from the where the side where the crosswalk would be. Um, oh man, mm, I hope there's a spot. Alright, like and subscribe, that's it for me. See ya.